In today's video, I want to talk about how you can address being made redundant and ultimately let go in a job interview. Look, if you're interviewing after being laid off because your position was made redundant, you are going to have to talk about it. This video is going to tell you exactly what to do, what to avoid doing, and how to best position yourself to succeed after this happens to you. Let's go. Okay, so when does this actually happen? Usually it's like for two reasons. One, there's a system change, right? Your company implements a system and that system uh, maybe makes a lot of what used to be made manual, now it's done by a system or they consolidate the effort into just less people because a machine or a system does more of the work. The other time this happens is when there's an acquisition. Your company's acquired by another company, you're redundant because they already have the department that you do and there's not a need to increase the headcount there. So those are the situations when it normally happens. Now in your interview, they're going to ask you questions like, why are you looking? Or we see you're no longer with the company most recently on your resume. Can you tell us about that? So it's going to come up. So it's important that you know how to talk about being made redundant properly. Now it's easy to think you can just say, hey, I was made redundant, that's it, let's move on, no big deal. But it's not that simple. I've been recruitment for about 15 years um, and I can tell you, here's their concern. The hiring manager is thinking, if people are made redundant, it's never going to be their top 25 or top 50% people. It's going to be their bottom performers. So if you, a candidate who has been made redundant, are interviewing here because you were, you were let go, you must be a bottom performer. But here's the reality, that's not always the case. There are plenty of times in which good performers are just made redundant and the organization views it as simple as that. We acquired a company, we already have a big sales department, an engineering department, a testing department, a recruiting department, and now we no longer need the, the department that existed within the company. Now, some organizations will take a deep dive into talent and evaluate who is worth keeping, but some won't. So that is a misconception. It's a misconception that great candidates um, are, are always retained by a company if there's an acquisition or if there's a system change. That's not the case. So that's why it's important to be able to talk about it because if you don't talk about it adequately, they may make the assumption that you're not a good performer and that's just not always the case. So what can you do to convince them that that's not the case, right? That's probably what you're thinking. Good thought. Okay, so here's, here's the two main things you can do to uh, convince them that you're not a bottom 50% performer and that's why you were made redundant. What you wanna do is be able to talk to your impact. If you've watched a bunch of my videos before, you know I'm a huge fan of quantifying your impact, meaning talking about what you've done in the past in your role uh, and how it made a positive impact to the organization. For example, I took over a new sales uh, territory. I was able to increase uh, customer acquisition speed by 50% and increase the book of business by 500K, creating, you know, $175,000 of profit for my organization in my first 12 months in the role. What you're doing there is you're talking about impact specifics timeline. So whatever that looks like for your role, if you can go back and be like, hey, my role was made redundant, but I was a high performer in this role. Let me tell you about a few of the things I accomplished over the last 12 months and you can go through and actually talk about where you made progress in your organization. That is really powerful uh, to, um, to counter their assumption, which again, could be incorrect. The second thing you can do to convince them that you're a top performer who is just adversely impacted, it's no fault of your own, is letter of recommendation and or having your most recent boss be a reference, right? So if you can go to them and say, look, my company was acquired, um, myself, as well as a bunch of people on my team were laid off. However, I have a letter of recommendation from my previous boss and I'm going to list my boss as a reference. You know, that is very powerful. Another thing that's really important here is saying myself along with about 50% of my department was let go due to redundancy is important. It shows strength in numbers. It wasn't just you, it was a lot of people who were impacted. That right there helps. So if you can say 50, 75, 80%, my entire department was also laid off because of redundancy, it immediately um, eliminates them thinking, oh, well, it was, it was a you issue. They go, no, that's a department issue. Now, what to avoid? Uh, what to avoid is almost as important as what to say. And here's what you need to avoid when you address this. You cannot be negative. You cannot be like, yeah, well, you know how corporations are. They acquired us and they let us all go. You know, that's just how it is. Nobody wants to hire that guy or gal. If you were that person and that is how you were talking, you are going to be perceived as negative in your interview. You do not want them to perceive you as negative, okay? So you have to not do that. You also can't play the victim card. Woe is me. This happens to me every time. 
That is not a good look. You need to talk about it rationally, like almost coldly. Look, you know, my, my company was acquired. The company who acquired us already had the department. So myself, as well as the entirety of my team was let go. We were made redundant, which I understand happens. And now I'm looking for blank. My boss can be a reference, etc. If you can do those things, that is the perfect way to interview after being made redundant. Now, after you talk about this, you're gonna still need to make a strong impression as a candidate. That's so why I made this video here. This video here talks about the four best questions you can ask at the end of the interview to really blow away the person who is interviewing uh, you. And I, I actually made this video right here because these are my four favorite. Like if I could only ask four questions at the end of my interview as a candidate, these are what I would ask. So I'm done here, but I will see you right over there right now. Let's go.